Ladies and gentlemen, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hopefully you guys are excited. My name is Josh, welcome to JJD TV, and today we will be taking a look at the Canadian Men's National Team roster when it is finally announced, if and when, we know, I know. But uh, I just want to, you know, let you guys know some of the other fun news. Damn it. Yeah, there we go. Stephanie Sacchio finally, finally signs for FC Porto, so that's, you know, Despite what this list may look like, that's some big smiles all around for some Canadian men's national team fans. He needed a way out of Passos de Ferreira, and he found it through FC Porto. Big, big opportunity for him. One of the biggest clubs. I mean, I, I'd argue that he's this Canadian who's playing for the second biggest club in the world. Like, in terms of Canadians, I think Porto's a little bit further ahead than Lille. So he's just behind Bayern guys. So, from our understanding, Wheeler tweeted out 315. So, I went early because I scheduled it. For three o'clock, so I thought I'd come on and you know talk about some of the fun news that that is FC Porto because man, he looks good in blue. Who else is gonna get a kit? He's number forty-six, by the way, same number he wore at Paco de Fajera. But we're hoping in about fifteen-ish minutes the the Canadian men's national team roster will be dropped, then we can discuss it, go through all of that fun stuff. But for right now, we can talk with you guys in the chat and uh, just you know admire Stephanie Stacchio and his big big move to FC Porto. I'm just going to pull up Canada soccer here on Twitter to see if and when they decide to drop it. Let's get in the comments, guys. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are so far on the Stachio transfer. And be sure, if you're just tuning in, to drop a like and a sub if you guys are new to the channel. But Canucks Hub is here. And yeah, 315, guys. So we we, we got some time. That's okay. Like I said, we'll, just, we'll admire Steph on the sideline here. Caleb says nine-point window. Let me know about down below, guys, in the comments. What's your guys' prediction in terms of points? I'm a little bit on the cautious side, given the fact, you know, everything that the soccer gods have thrown our way in terms of being half capacity in Hamilton, losing Davies, potentially losing Estacchio. We're not 100% sure yet. So I said I'd be happy with a five-point window, at least one of the wins down in Central America. I'd be happy with a draw against the U.S., but we shall see. Yay, it's JJ. Alex, how you doing, my friend? We hear you, Josh. Um, greetings from Chile, Montreal. All right. After you guys put in your point prediction, let me know how cold it is where you guys are from. I know there's some Canadians out there. Adrian just told me it was negative 23 in Montreal. It's only negative like 17 ish where I'm from. Uh, but yeah, it does look like Corbiano will not be in the roster. Unfortunately, he just did a media, uh, <laughs> call with, uh, MK Dons, which kind of sucks. I kind of wanted to see Corbiano in, in there, but again, we do have a lot of talent on the wing. So I don't know. It is what it is. Hey, Josh, please don't say you'd be happy with five points, man. The boys always prove you wrong. Hey, I, I was being conservative, guys, because we are close, man. We are close, close, close to the finish line, close to coming in and qualifying for the World Cup. And I, we need at least a five-point window, and I think that we can definitely do it. But if we go down there and we get three points out of Honduras, we set ourselves up very, very nicely because hopefully we get something from the U.S. match, and then that leaves the third match. And if you guys look through at the previous windows – that third match is a tricky one for teams playing Canada. Canada seem to find an extra gear. They find a way to run away with matches. So hopefully El Salvador just hits a stumbling block and they aren't able to get the job done. But we uh, we, we will see. I mean, seven-point window would be, a, would be a dream, man, and that would pretty much get us there. Hey, Josh, how are we feeling? I'm feeling good, man. Feeling nervous. Curious to see what this roster looked like. Of course, there's some Daniel Jebson tweets that were floating around. I'd be surprised if he was in this uh, in this uh, window here, but you, you never know. Uh, he may be the best mid in CONCACAF. Scott coming in with some love. Big window for Canada. Y'all just about lock up your place. Good luck. Cheers, Tyler. I appreciate it. Stan comes in and says, Harry Patton needs to be called up for the midfield. I'm hoping for 30 players in the squad. I would not mind a 30-player squad, but I think that's a little high for what Canada will probably do. Mexico and Panama both brought 30. U.S. brought 28, so John Herman should follow suit. I agree with that. I totally agree that he should definitely follow suit. I don't know if he will go high, high as 30. If I'd, ex I'd expect, I'd hope, maybe 28, but we'll have to wait and see. What's up, Josh? Uh, what a move. Yeah, man. I just want you guys to come in and just admire Stephanie Stacky, man. He looks good in blue, so I will be picking up a kit as soon as I can. Um, someone let ESPN know that Eustachio is the real deal. 
They'll find out, my man. They'll find out. Keep up the great work, Josh. I appreciate that, my friend. Hopefully, you guys are enjoying the content. You guys are excited for the roster drop. Hopefully, if Wheeler's right, 10 more minutes, and then we can. I'll toss, the, I'll toss it up on screen for you guys. But right now, Canada Soccer's last tweet, which is just beautiful stuff. So that's what we have up for you guys right now. Uh, big loss. Yeah, I mean, a lot of people, I asked you guys who you thought was a bigger loss, Eustachio or Davies. And a lot of you guys did say Eustachio because we don't really have anyone who can do what he does. And it's weird to say, considering Alfonso Davies is the best player in the region, but a lot of players can come up there and not replace Davies, but do a role in, in a wing back position. Atacubi's a fan, fantastic player. Larea, if he ends up going over to the left, then we have Miller up front. We thought we maybe could call in Corbiano, but it doesn't look like it. Takatito was a Porto legend. Yeah, the, the CONCACAF roots are in there, guys. The CONCACAF roots are in there. Uh, step is 25. Uh, happy with the signing. Nervous about this. Yeah, these are the points that we asked you guys for. A lot of you guys are saying seven. Some are more on the conservative side. Six from Canada National Team updates. That's a fair one. I'm assuming you'd say we'd win in Central America twice. Yeah, I mean, I'd be... I'd hope we get at least five. Five, maybe six, I'd be happy with. It's it's almost job done if we're able to pull that off, man. Uh, sticking with seven, yeah. Yeah, uh, there are a lot of confidence, and we should be confident, man. We're sitting top of the table. It's it's tricky, though, because, I mean, looking in, the, in, in history, going to Central America is not easy. It's not an easy task to do whatsoever. It's just obviously times have changed. Canada has got a much better team than we usually have had over the years, and Honduras are in a terrible position right now, bottom of the table. El Salvador, if we're talking about depth and how it's meant looking at previous windows, that third match is tricky for teams who don't have as deep as depth as the Canadians have. So you, you never know, man. Uh, I'm impressed with your pr pronunciation of Pacos de Fajera. Did, did I get it right? I, I used uh, I used uh, Filippo. He's Brazilian, so, you know, they speak Portuguese. He said Passos de Fajera. So I kind of, you know, stole that. I hope I'm pronouncing it right. But now it doesn't matter because they're in the past. Porto is in the future, and I can definitely pronounce that. Negative eight in Hamilton. Yeah, it's chilly. It's chilly. There we go. There we go. Negative 23 in Montreal. That's what we like to hear. Negative seven. Negative seven. Yeah, I mean, the game could have been in Vancouver. Could have been nice. Two degrees. Is Usaki a six? I don't know much about y'all's international. He is. If he's going to break into the Porto starting 11, He's going to do it playing as a six. It's probably not going to be Vitina that he takes out and they because they play in a 4-4-2 system. So I'd expect him to play deeper, play as kind of a six, but we'll have to see. It's gonna it's gonna be tricky for him, but they obviously put a lot of faith in Eustachio. We're hoping that the job will be there for him to, to shine, have opportunity to play, because that's the worry when you're a national team supporter. Can if you make a move like this and you get out of your comfort zone, which I always hope that these Canadians will do, will they play? And that's going to be the big question mark around Estacchio is what's his playing time going to look at Porto? But because of his weird contract situation, he needed to find a way out and he found a way to do so. They get a 14 in Ottawa. Chilly that way, my man. Chilly that way. Uh, first game has been tough on us. We find our legs in game two. It has. And that makes me nervous. That's why I, I was saying five points. If we don't get the win against Honduras, I'm hoping that we can find a way against El Salvador. And then, again, whatever happens, happens in uh, the U.S. match. But, yeah, we have every right to be confident. But looking at where you guys are chilling from today, man. <laughs> Six points is what I want to see. But you're, you're in uh, what feels like negative 34 in Winnipeg. Oh, my man. Ah, my boy Mark's tuned in, says I'm supposed to have a meeting right now. <laughs> Another person has not joined Zoom, so I'm here until they join. Mark, glad you are able to tune in, my man. Hopefully, the roster will drop soon. Let me know if you guys see it. I'm kind of poking back and forth between Twitter. I'll bring it up on you, Scott, on the screen, guys, once it is is announced. Um, uh, do you know much on Porto? You think Eustachio can make a first team? Uh, I do. They play in a 4-4-2 system. Their two midfielders right now are very different. One plays more as a 6, one plays more as an 8. Vitinha is the more attacking one. So if Eustachio was going to play in a 4-4-2 system for Porto, he will play as that kind of that 6, where the Vitinha will play just in front of him. But they could switch shape. They could switch into a 4-2-3-1 potentially. Vitinha would move up to the cam, and that opens up a three-man midfield. So we'll see. I I'm very curious. I think the first few games will have an indication of Eustachio will be 
really integrated into this Porto side or if it's going to take a little bit of time. Only time will tell, guys. But we're about five minutes away. So if you guys are just tuning in, if you could be so kind and drop a like on the chat, it's always appreciated, as well as a sub if you guys are new around here. As we got a comment coming in saying, Panama needs to drop points too. And Panama has a very tricky window. So we're hoping... I mean, I think someone tweeted at me and said, Josh, I hope for a Panama-Jamaica draw. And that kind of makes sense because it kind of keeps Jamaica at bay but doesn't allow Panama to creep too much up on us. It's going to be interesting. There'll be a lot of match-watching this window, I think. Surprise Corbiano uh, is doing... I'm, I'm curious as well. I mean, my one theory would be that MK Dons just brought him in. They want to give him the opportunity to play. They are still playing football, so they didn't want to release him. That could be one theory. Maybe Herdman just simply didn't call him up. They, he thought he had enough options on the wings. I don't 100% know. All I know is that Corbiano has been playing, and he's on good form. So it's it'd be a shame if he's not in the roster and it doesn't look like he's going to be. So I think that's a little disappointing. But again, we'll just have to uh, wait and see. And it's out. It is out, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get this thing up for you guys. Roster's finally here. Let's take a look. I'm curious, man. This is my first, this is my first look at it. I have not taken a look yet. So you guys are getting raw, raw reactions. We're going to make it big for you guys. Here it is. Here it is, guys. We're just going to quickly, quickly drop a, a, a little retweet. There we go. All right, let's take a look. The Canemans national team roster is out. So we got Samuel Adekubi, no surprise. Borian, Buchanan, Cavallini, no surprise. Cornelius is in, which is good. I think he's been an excellent form, and I wanted him in here. Crepo, David, Stefan Ustachio is in, man. So that's a very interesting... And if someone could, in the meantime, let me know how many... I'm not going to count them. If someone could count the the names quickly, because that does not look like a big list. Um, but anyways, we'll keep going. But yeah, I'm very happy Ustachio is there. Does not mean he's going to play all the, all the matches. We're hoping maybe his COVID situation, he got his move. A lot of people theorize that Ustakio found out he had COVID because of his medical at Porto, and that that lines up. I mean, that, that makes sense. So that's that's interesting. Hopefully, he'll be able to have some type of part. Liam Frazier comes in after getting his move to Belgium. Uh, Christian Gutierrez, which was leaked. Daniel Henry is in, which is surprising. It's a beautiful thing about StreamYard. Canadian Wi-Fi will, will screw you over, but you'll you'll we'll find we'll find a way to make it work. I think I think we're okay. I was looking over at the screen. Uh but we're we're back. We're back. Um Okay, good. Yeah, StreamYard sucks. The nice the one nice thing, well my Wi-Fi sucks, but the one nice thing about StreamYard is that um What am I sharing here? Oh, I'm sharing the I'm sharing the other one. Whoops. Okay. The one nice thing about StreamYard is that we can uh All right, let's share this screen. We're back, we're okay. Okay. Let me know if it starts buffering guys again, <laughs> but it's back. Apologies. But the one nice thing about StreamYard is if your Wi-Fi is crap and it kicks you out, it will let you back in and, you know, 
we're laughing. We're laughing. I'm just going to exit that out. Um, all right. I'm going to try to get some of my streaming situation figured out. All right. Hopefully we're back. Good guys. So <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, that's that. Is, I don't know. I'm sure when I stopped talking, um, I was just saw a bunch of F's in the chat and I thought you guys were mad about the roster, but no, you're mad because I wasn't there anymore. So all right, my bad, my bad. But yeah, guys, all right, I'll sort of start over, but I'll just quickly take a look at the the um, the uh, <laughs> the team. But if you guys could be so kind and drop a like, sorry for the, uh, for the, you know, the Canadian Wi-Fi. It is what it is. But yeah, I'll quickly go through it one more time. Atakubi, Borean, Buchanan, Cavallini, Cornelius, I'm happy about. Crepo, David, Eustachio. Rumors were that we found, he found out that he had COVID because of his medical at Porto, which would make sense. Frazier's here, Gutierrez. Daniel Henry, who's on on a trial with RSL, made it in, which is interesting. Hoylet's here. Atiba, Johnson, K. And we have the three-man lefties at center backs. Kamal Miller, Kennedy, Cornelius, which I think is the right call. Laren, of course, is in. Richie Larea. Jason, you know, third keeper. He's playing with Oldham. Who, Oldham is not having a good season. Miller's in. Azorio, Piet, Ugbo, and Steven Vittoria. Guys, 25-man roster. Not enough, if you ask me. But yeah, I crashed a few minutes ago. Sorry, guys. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm surprised Usakio. Maybe he's in quarantine. The rumors were that Canada was going to try to figure out a way to get him to play. Now, I don't know if his quarantine date might allow him to play towards the end of the window. Uh, a lot of Fs in the chat for Josh. Come on, Josh. Wake up, man. Wake up. My bad, guys. My bad. Welcome back. He's back. We're good. It's snowing a lot around here. I live 30, 40 minutes away. Um, he's back. Yes, from Oldham. And he's playing. And I'm assuming, I mean, for a third third keeper, a lot of people were theorizing, thinking that he uh, he he would be a good option anyways. So it kind of makes sense that he was included in there. Letter Kenny, Wi-Fi is not great, eh? It's not great. It was embarrassing. Uh, I'm incredibly disappointed with no Corbiano. We only had two pacey wingers right now. Yeah, guys, that's a good... It's a it's a good topic to touch on. I was disappointed as well. I mean, we only took twenty five, like you guys stated earlier, and we we've are aware of a lot of the guys. A lot of <laughs> they brought thirty man rosters. US took twenty eight. Twenty five for me is not enough. I would have loved Corbiano to be there, especially because he's playing. I mean, obviously, no surprises with Jebson, no Mitrovic, which is a little disappointing. Um, but I mean, it, as long as everyone stays healthy and COVID doesn't screw us over. We could be okay, but remember, we do have a lot of players. I think we have five players who are on yellows. Not ideal either. Oh, well, just so people don't complain, this reminds me of when they added three players who never played in the October window. Um, I said Henry and then screen, screen, screen cap. Uh, JD's here says, all the best. Cheers, my man. Um, uh, my prediction was correct. Yes, you. Yes, it was, Stan. JD from Jamaica is tuning in. No Mitrovic. Super disappointing. We were hoping Mitrovic was going to be in there. No Patton as well. No Corbiano, no Patton. That's it's a disappointing, man. Patton's been really, really good this season. Been the best player for Ross County by a good distance. And to him not being here is pretty disappointing. But it's there's still there's still a lot of talent in there. No Corbiano, Mitrovic does suck. Five days we go to this the hammer Ustachio. Probably play in a 3-5-2. That would make the most sense. It's just where do you use Buchanan? If you go three, I mean, it, it almost almost makes sense for a four four two, depending on if you stack he was available. You have Borean and Net. You have Larea or Miller, or sorry, Larea or Johnson at your right back. Then you have Vittoria with one of the lefties at your two center backs. You have Adakubi at left back. Then you have Liam Miller with Buchanan as your wings or Hoylet and Buchanan on the wings, like left right, right mid. And then you got Kay Hutch, and then you have your two strikers. You have Ugbo, who hopefully will see some minutes. So to me, it screams, it does scream a two striker system, but we'll see. I'm sure Herdman, as he likes to do, will play with the, the system quite a bit. No Patton, Mitrovic, Corbiano, or Jebson. Kind of expected. The, the rumors was there was no surprise. So Patton wouldn't have been a surprise if he was in. So I think it's pretty disappointing that Patton's not in. Um did come back from injury, but again, he's been in good form and he's been playing. So I I don't love that he's not in. Mitrovic would have been a surprise. We don't know if he's just not ready to commit or, or what the situation is. Maybe maybe a transfer. Bit of a disappointment. Corbiano looks like he didn't get released. Jebson probably not ready to commit either. So 
kind of annoying. Herman always goes with small rosters for some reason. Uh, I'd still take Ugbo over Corbiano at the moment. It depends on the system, and it just doesn't hurt to take more bodies. It's going to hurt if some of the yellow cards and potential COVID situations put it, puts us in an uncomfortable position. Uh, rosters aside, we need to be aggressors in all three games. We're one of the teams that feared, so we play the way long history of parking the bus and countering. Yeah, that was kind of the, the system we went with in the U.S. match. Uh, they can add players if COVID injuries and yellows accumulate. Yes, they can. Uh, they could have players on standby. Uh, uh, excited to see Canada can overcome the challenge of playing away. How are you, you doing, my man? Newest member of the CONCACAF Council, so be sure to check him out. He covers the, the Panama side. So in the last match, we'll hopefully get him on the channel if he's interested to do a preview when Canada takes on Panama because that game could potentially have uh, some impact on the on the standings. JDD TV, this lineup is basically the same as last w window, but plus Hoylet, minus Davies. Herman is going for consistency. Can't blame him for keeping the squad. Yeah, I mean it's it, it just it sucks because it doesn't suck. I mean this is a good this is a good uh, roster. We knew Davies wasn't available. It is what it is. Hoylet is back. It's a disappointment because there are a lot of talents that we'd hope to get in here. I was really hoping to see Mitrovic. I really thought there was a chance, but then again. Reports came out that there was no surprises, so, you know. Uh, what about Joe David as Cam? He played there well there for Genk. Or Gent, not Genk. Uh, yeah, I mean, he hasn't played there in a while, obviously playing in a two-striker system for Lille. You'd assume him and Laren could be able to figure out a way to be successful. But I think it's very curious to see what E.K. Ugbo could do. Potentially either with Laren or David, if David and Laren can't figure it out together. But for me, this system really screams, like I said, 3-5-2, 4-4-2. Uh, but for pacey wingers, we could still do a 4-2-3-1. You could have Buchanan and Miller on the wings, like right attacking mid, left attacking mid. You could have Osorio as your cam. Or Laren on the win. It's it's going to be interesting, man. It's going to be very interesting. Dan's tuning in, says, Yo, Joss in chat, how you doing? Uh, Hoylet was on the bench, so if he's game fit, we need him. He can play, like, if we played a 4-2-3-1, Hoylet, Osorio could easily play as, as the two cams there. So that's an it's an interesting show. I'm, I'm excited to see what Hoylet can do. I like when he plays in a, in a top at a front two as well. If you're looking at a three five two, or even a four four two, Hoylet likes to kind of play as that false nine, playing off the striker. I'm sure we're gonna see him having effect. Who is the backup right back for Larea? If we were if we were to play with a back four, my assumption is that it would be Larea or Alistair Johnson at right back. If we were to play in a wing back. We've seen Alistair Johnson play there. I don't like him there. I think that you can't you can't really replace him in that outside right center back. So for right wing back, you could have Richie Larea, or you could have Tejan Buchanan. He he can drop down. He's playing right now as a wing back for Club Bruges. We know he's played it for Canada before. So more than likely on the right, it would be Larea and Buchanan as the wing backs if we play it with a, a midfield five. On the other side, it would be Atakubi. And then probably Larea, <laughs> if we if we had to. Larea can fill in at left wing back as well. He can play that position comfortably as well. Or maybe even Tejan. So there is there, there is some versatile players, which is uh, uh which is important to have. Key players are included. Um I don't know any vaccination statuses, Matt. So that's an interesting one. A lot of rumors were going around about that. Uh hopefully Mitrovic isn't in because of the transfer. We'll see him in March. Yeah, it's interesting. I Again, I don't know. I don't have any insight on that. I mean, Steph just pulled off a transfer, but it looks like it was done ahead of time, and it's the reason they might have found out, and I say might have because I'm not saying this is 100% accurate, but they might have figured out he had COVID because of his medical at FC Porto. He's a Porto player, so as long as he can get over COVID, there's a chance we can see him for it, maybe at least the El Salvador match. I don't know. But yeah, maybe Mitrovic was looking for a, 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 a move. I mean, his dad's pretty social on on Twitter. So again, we're just speculating, but it's, it's still, it's still a strong squad. It really is. I'm, I'm, ex I'm expecting maybe, and I'll let you guys, if you want to put any starting 11s in the chat guys, you can, and I'll put them on screen. I'm expecting here's maybe mine. I kind of want to see, I don't know if I want a four, four, two, I kind of want to see a four, four, two. I kind of do for the first match. So I'd expect maybe Borean and net, Right back, Johnston. Center back, Victoria, and probably Scott Kennedy. Left back, Atakubi. Right mid, Buchanan. 
center mid Hutch K, left mid Liam Miller, and then your two strikers, Laren and David. That's probably what I would do. I doubt that's what Herman's going to do. Um, why are Panda Miss Davies and Waterspoon on Canada's Instagram story? Probably an error. I didn't look at that, but yeah, all three aren't in. Um, Panda Miss probably just wasn't chosen. It's not playing right now. Davies with COVID, or what, the issues he had from COVID, and then Waterspoon with injuries. Caleb says, I feel like Tejon Miller should be closer to the edge of the box while Larea and Atakubi go wide. Yeah, I mean, you could get all of them in. If you played a 3 4 3, you could have Larea at right wing back. You could have. You could have Atakubi at left wing back, Tejon and Miller on the wings, and play with one striker. So that's another way to get them in with overlapping runs. Larea and Johnston have to play every minute. There's a chance. There's, it depends on the system. Like I said, if we play in a 4 4 2, where do you start Larea and Johnston? I think Johnston plays every match if we play in a back three. Uh, but I, I agree. They're, both of them are, are very, very important. Oh, yeah. Gutierrez is the backup left back. Yes, I forgot all about Gutierrez. I'd still prefer to start the Rea at left wing back if Tejon is starting at the right, if I'm being honest. Uh, strongly thinking Corbiano would turn down the call because he just moved and settled in, although so did Larea. Yeah, I I have a feel. I don't know, guys. Again, this is just my opinion. Take it take it as what it is. Uh, I feel like MK Dons didn't want Corbiano to go. Uh, and maybe Corbiano saw, hey, I'm, I'm just scored. Th- that's like, it's a fair shout, man. You could easily see them say, hey, we just moved MK Dons. We scored. We're playing well. We're getting starting minutes in the winger position, exactly what we want. Maybe I wouldn't play so much if I went on the Canada call-up. It's an interesting debate. I'm not 100% sure. Maybe a little bit more infra- information will come out. King says, Eusakio falls positive. Those are rumors. I can't I can't tell you, but hopefully if he, if he was fully positive, then he'll be able to recover in time. We'll have to see. Uh, here's some starting 11s, guys, that you guys are going to toss into the chat. Um, Borian, Miller, Victoria Johnston. I do like that. I'm interesting to hear what you guys have to say about the outside left center back. Because obviously Kamal Miller has just rose to the occasion, but he's not playing. Derek Cornelius, Scott Kennedy, it's perfect to talk about them because they just came off of a really strong weekend. Both of them scored. Both of them played strongly. Both of them have played on that. What's well, that outside? It's a left center back, but Cornelius has played in a back three a lot throughout the season. So if it was me, I'd I personally on the left, I would start one of Kennedy or or Cornelius, probably Kennedy. But I have a feeling that Philip, you're, you're going to be right, and Miller will get the start. Either way, I, I'm fine with it. Miller, Hoylet, K, Azorio. So you're putting Hoylet or Miller as left wing back. More than likely, it would be Atakubi. Um, K, Azorio, Atiba as a three man midfield. Larea or Buchanan at right wing back. Laren Ugbo with David. Yeah, I that could totally be a that could totally be a starting 11. I would just put Atakubi in on the left. Uh, Spike says, yes, I'd start with a 4-4-2. Uh, heck, Mitchell's dad's probably watching. Maybe. We, saw, we, we, we think Davey's uncle was in here once, but I can't confirm that. He said he was. I'm going to pretend that it was him because, you know, made me smile. Uh, Liam Miller will have a few big games. A lot of you guys have been coming in saying this is a good opportunity for Liam Miller to have a real impact on the window this this upcoming one, and I totally agree. He's had a really good season, played a lot of minutes. Uh, it, I'm a big fan of 4-2-3-1s, and obviously we've seen us play it. I don't think we have an all-in-out number 10. I mean, it, it'd be Azorio or it would be Hoylet, but I think having the opportunity to have Miller and Tejon on the wings, it, it's a good little opportunity. Yeah, Miller going to turn up this window. If you guys are still joining with us today, guys, be sure to drop a like on the chat if you guys are just joining us, or if you're new to the channel, drop a sub. Put your opinions in. Put in your predict- predicted starting 11s. We got another one coming in here. Oh, actually, I already looked at that one. Unless you changed it up. Miller and Tejon could be a killer duo, man. Our defense has improved this window with Kennedy back in. I agree. And I'd probably I'd probably start him. Azorio is needed in Honduras. Need a strong midfield presence. If I was going a midfield three, Azorio would be in it. It would be in a midfield three. I would go Borian. Right wing back, Larea, Johnston, Victoria, Kennedy, Atakubi, left wing back. Three man midfield would be K, Hutch, and Azorio. And then the two strikers would be Laren and David, and just pray they figure it out and put it in. But I mean, I'd be excited to see Ugbo potentially start a match as well. I don't think Laren should start because he's not fully, he's not really that fit to play this match. I mean, we have the option of, of starting Ugbo as well with David. A lot of people want to see that. 
I think I think that Herdman prefers Laren. So I I have a feeling unless he's been told, hey, no, we'll have to see. But yeah, MK Dons is also in a good promotion race, and Corbiano has been an, an instant hit on the team. Uh, why bring Cavallini to sit on the bench? I mean, you guys know I'm not <sighs> Cavallini's biggest fan. I like I like I like Lucas Cavallini, but just given his club situation, you don't really want player like players, you know who are completely out of form, lacking confidence. However, I will say Cavallini does bring a real CONCACAF edge. He will be useful late in the match. We don't really have a striker like him in terms of holding, hold up play, getting, getting the ball, trying to kill out minutes. He did it at Mexico. So there is, there is a reason. And I do think Herbin does like him. Um, Kennedy is not a lock-in starter. I think we, I think we have three very capable left center backs or outside left center backs, Cornelius Kennedy and, Miller. Now, I, I'm assuming from Herman's perspective, it'd probably go right now Kamal Miller, Kennedy, and then Cornelius. I've been talking up Cornelius for a while. I really think that he's 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 proved a lot of doubters wrong, and I think he deserves a chance to uh, to start a match. And the match he played for Canada, he played really well in. Here's another predicted starting eleven. I think from Andrew, he's going top to bottom. We got Laren and David up front. Tejon at I'm assuming you mean right wing back, Atakubi, Steph, Orke, Atiba, Larea at left wing back or right wing back. I'm not sure what you're what we're doing here. Okay, maybe it's a 3-4-3. Borean, Johnson, Victoria, Kennedy, Larea at right wing back, Tejon left or Atakubi left wing back, Steph, Orke with Atiba. Yeah, okay. It's a 3-4-3. Yeah. So I mean, that makes sense. You could put Laren out wide. We haven't seen him been pushed out wide quite yet. David, left wing, Laren, white, Laren, striker. David, losing my mind here. <laughs> Bring me back to four. David, striker, Laren, left wing, Buchanan, right wing. I would like to see that. I talked with Alex about it when he came on for our depth chart episode, and it'd be really interesting to see if Herbin's interested in doing something like that. I'd love to see Laren pushed out wide. He plays at Apishikdas. He has not really done it for Canada, at least in this Canada squad, so I'm all for seeing that. What would you consider six points of success? I would. I'd be happy with five. Maybe I'm shooting a little bit too low, but we're very close. And as long as you have major, major hiccups, if we get five points, which we've done many times in these windows, that puts us right on pace. And if Panama has a tough window, we could be sitting pretty. But there's, I mean, there is no real reason to think that we can't get seven. Going to Honduras, going to El Salvador, and if we can get something against the US, it's all, it's all to play for. I see us getting seven. I'd be very happy with that. Six points is a W with Davies and Eustachio out. Again, I agree with that. Ubo can make can make a name for himself in this window. He can. I really think that Ubo will get a start. I'm curious to see which match he'll start in. Maybe and maybe you guys are saying if Laren isn't a hundred percent, maybe it's Ugbo and David, and that'd be that'd be that'd be very interesting. Ubo going to show why he belongs in consideration for the number nine role. He had a bad game yesterday because no one can get him the ball in the box. The one thing that we do know, he's a good back-to-goal type of striker. He's a true number nine. GM Theo going to talk to uh, Jebo tomorrow. I'm hoping so, my man. I'm hoping so. Here's another starting 11 coming in from you guys. 3-5-2, Miller, Victoria, Johnston. Very, very realistic. Larea on the left. Hutch, K, Osorio, Buchanan on the right. David and Laren. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I can see that as well. It's, it's a shame, though, because Atakubi was obviously, in my opinion, probably our standout player from the last window. So it's it sucks to maybe not get him in. But I think a two-striker system is probably the way we're going to go in that first match, whether it's a 4-4-2 or a 3-5-2. Cavallini scoring a 93rd minute game winner guaranteed. Another uh, starting 11 coming in. Borean, Kamal, Victoria Johnson. So yeah, from your guys' comments, and in my opinion as well, I, I do think our, our locked-in back three in, in an all out match would be Miller, Victoria Johnston. But it's, I just, I feel like I need to note that Cornelius and Kennedy, in my eyes, are right there beside Kamal Miller and both can do a job. You got Atakubi with Hutch K and Larea, and then you got Laren, David, and Buchanan. So yeah, pushing Laren out wide. Laren is the best forward in CONCACAF. He is 100%. He should be on. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting in the last. Few, Little bit Laren has been the better striker. Uh, which I, I think is pretty interesting. And this is another interesting one for you guys. 
Do you, do you think that Henry sees minutes? I think that he does. I personally wouldn't. For example, if we play, I mean, it's, it is interesting. Let me think about this. Because if we play in a back three, you, we have three lefties. So we play two of them. You have jo- Alistair Johnson out on the right. You play then Kennedy through the middle or Cornelius through the middle with Miller or the other one out on the left. If you go, and that's if, you, if Vittoria needs a rest. Otherwise, you go Vittoria, you go Johnson, and then you play one of the other ones. Because you're only going to start Henry in a back three in the central center back position, which now that we have three center backs that play on the left, I would use Kennedy or Cornelius for the middle. On top of that, if you go into a back four, I wouldn't really want to see Henry start. I'd expect if you're going to give Vittoria a break, give him a break and then do a back three. That way you can play Johnston, you can play Kennedy, and then you can play Miller or Cornelius for your back three. And then if you're going to give Johnston a break, go to a back four and play Vittoria with one of the three left center center backs. And then you put Larea at right back out of Kubi at left back. That's what I would do. Henry has been very, I mean, he's a good servant for Canada, but he hasn't been playing very well for Canada. He got yanked off on the 30 fifth minute or something like that he's not playing right now so i think it's very risky if we look to start henry so if anything he comes off the bench late in the match to try to kill it out but yeah i wouldn't like to see him get too many minutes another 343 coming in laren tajon and uh david up front i like that sam steph k atiba Larea, Kennedy, Victoria, Alistair. I like that one as well. I just saw reports on Twitter that Cavallini came into the Whitecaps preseason in top shape. Could be a bounce back season for him. It could be, man. It could be. But with Brian White playing the way that he was and just didn't offer nothing for Cavallini to get in there, I think it's a big hill to climb. But you never know, man. You never know. Uh, will you do a, a prediction to the result of this of the window of the games? Curious to see how you rate everyone else. Uh, with the info now at our disposal. I was going to do a big preview uh, with the Unsackable crew, but with the time frame, probably not. I'll be doing a... I probably won't look into all of the matches, but I'll do like a... We have our prediction co- or our preview coming up tomorrow for the Honduras and Canada match. We'll go. I'll go over lineups of what I expect and talk about the match, and I'll do that for each one, but um, probably won't look at all of the results. Then at the end, we'll do a big review. And then I will look at some of the results. Gutierrez and Cavallini will both see time of the bench or, or starts. With, they both play pro in the South in Chile and Mexico. There's a chance. I mean, there's a lot of chance. There's a chance that a lot of these players will see minutes. Uh, just it would be probably towards the end of matches, I'd assume. I don't think Gutierrez or Cavallini, this is just my opinion. I don't think they're going to start any matches. But I think there's a good possibility that they both see the pitch at some point. Uh, where is Patton? Underrated player. I totally agree. He's he's not in. That's that's one of the, the bigger disappointments for me because, I mean, he's played for Canada before, so you kind of expect that he'd be in there. Paul comes in. One big issue. We don't have a good backup for Johnson at right center back. Basically, only Henry. So, yeah. So, as I just I kind of said, if it was me, if you're going to rest Alistair Johnston and you can pull it off, play a back four. Have Vittoria with one of the three center backs and then have Larea at right back. Uh, and then, like I said, if you're going to re- rest Vittoria, then put one of the lefties at central center back, like Kennedy with, say, Miller and Johnston. But uh, yeah, I mean, if, if he wants, if he's stuck on playing that system and Johnston picks up something and isn't able to play, then yeah, there's some real question marks. And if it was me on that outside right, I, man, I'd arguably almost start Cornelius out there over Henry. I I think if you're going to start Henry in the back three, it needs to be in the middle. And I'm very, very skeptical to do that. Borean, Johnson, Victoria, Kennedy, Buchanan, Hutch, Azorio, K, Atakubi, Laren, David. Very realistic starting 11. Um, Yeah, very very realistic. It would be Larea is the only one that's the odd man out. Uh, But yeah, I mean, he hasn't, hasn't been, he had this move, hasn't played for Nottingham yet. So you you never know, man. It's, It's always, it's always, Fun to to kind of guess around what's uh, what's going to happen here. If Gutierrez is in the game. He should be taking all corners and free kicks. Stan comes in. Borean Miller, Victoria Johnson, Larea Hutch K Hoylet at wing back. I don't know if I'd rock Hoylet out at wing back, but you never know. Laren is class. Who would you rest for? 
a half game. Who subs for them, in your opinion? So, yeah, like, like I said, I mean, players who may need rest, because I, I think two of the games expect very strong, and then maybe that U.S. game, they're going to tactically line up to try to get the point. I, I don't know. I'm just guessing. But like like I said, if we're going through positions, just for example, I mean, it'd be Borean. If it's not Borean, it'll be Crepo. At right wing back, I'd go Larea or Buchanan. Outside right center back, I'd go Johnson. If you push me on another one, I'd probably go Cornelius. Central center back, I'd go Vittoria or Kennedy. Outside left, I'd go Miller, Kennedy, Cornelius. Left wing back, you have Gutierrez, but I mean, you could play out of Kubi with Larea as, as a backup option, for example. Gutierrez could come in on a sub. Three-man midfield, you have Hutch K in there. You have Liam Frazier, who will probably come on at some point. I doubt he'll start. But you have Hutch, who will probably only play two matches, maybe sub on for one of them. K, who I think, depending on Eustachio's fitness, K has an opportunity to get a ton of minutes this window. Hopefully, Eustachio will play at least one. For strikers, rotate between Laren, David, and Ugbo. And if you have wingers... Maybe you push Laren out there for a game. If not, you have Tejon and you have Liam Miller. So there's there's a lot of there's a lot of options still. Even though it's a 25 man squad, there are still a, a ton of options. Do you think Canada will utilize one of Cornelius Kennedy or Miller in the middle? Maybe I'm way behind on comments, <laughs> but yes, I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping I, I I feel like I'm probably wrong and he he may go Henry, but I'm desperately hoping that it would be Kennedy. And then have Miller or Cornelius on the outside. I think Daniel Henry would be good to come off the bench for the final 20 of a game and see it out. It depends, man. His challenges have just been terrifying me of late. So I, I don't know. And he's not in form. He's not playing. So I just I just feel like it's risky. I really do. Thoughts on Windsor getting a CPL expansion? They have the rights. Doesn't mean that they're anywhere near getting, getting the... Um, the team there, if they do put it in, I think that, like I said, they're hoping to utilize on Detroit being right there, get some U.S. Uh, fans coming in. But it wouldn't have been my first pick. I think there's a few other ones that deserve one before Windsor. Um, hoping we see Victoria strike a bomb of a free kick. Ryan comes in, says best eleven: Borean Miller, Victoria Johnson, Atakubi, Hutch, Steph Miller, Steph Larea, Miller, David, and Laren. Interesting. If you're going three four three, I mean, I love I love me some Liam Miller. I'd probably throw Tejon in there, but it's it's fair. It's why we have these debates. U.S. have lots have a lot of good players playing in the top ten leagues in Europe, but they can't select them because of the MLS quota. <laughs> Looks like some excellent players are missing out on their squad. Yeah, we definitely listen to uh, definitely listen to Tack be pretty vocally vocally upset about that. Um, our backup keepers are very underrated. I know Barian is number one. Yeah, guys, I'm a big fan of Maxime Crepeau. And like I said, I've had a couple people ask me what my thoughts were on the Crepeau transfer. I don't know what led to the transfer, but all I know is now it opens up a spot for another Canadian to get hopefully first team minutes. Asal will be the new starter for the Vancouver Whitecaps, talented young keeper. He's been highly praised and looks like he can do a job there. And LAFC were desperate for a keeper. And Crepeau is going to go live in beautiful California, play in a big popular market. So it's a win-win if he didn't go to Europe. Do you think Jebson will choose to represent Canada? My gut tells me yes. Again, guys, my gut means nothing. But I think Jebson will represent Canada one day. I think Mitrovic will, and I don't think Flores will. Those are all just what my gut has to tell me. So that means it means nothing. So I don't say, oh, Josh said he's going to do it. That doesn't, doesn't mean anything. But I think that Jebson will eventually, uh, will eventually choose Canada, yes. I think if Johnson, for whatever reason, can't go, Herdman goes to a back four instead. 100% agree with you, my man. I 100% agree for you. Yeah, and then just, yeah, yeah, Waterman. I, I would like to see one of them come in as well, but I 100% agree. If we don't, if Johnson isn't good to go, back four, Larea comes in, we're laughing. Yash is tuned in. Yash, how you doing, my man? Good luck, you guys. Was here earlier, but YouTube is bugging out. <laughs> I agree about Patton. He's an excellent player, but he won't play until he gets a big move. He has been playing so well for Ross County. They were bottom of the table, and he had good performances each and every week. They've now climbed off the bottom ever since Wallerspoons got injured. St. Johnstone are now basement of the table, but yeah, it's a shame. I really like to see him come in. I don't see Larea not playing. He should be playing 70-plus minutes in every match. Such a key player for us. It is. He. I don't know exactly what his match fitness is. Obviously, he hasn't played in a little bit. 
He did get the move to Forest, so I mean, take it as what you will. But yeah, he is a very important player. But there, there's a bunch of them. Adekubi came out of left field in the last window, and he impressed me the most. Now we have, we still have uh, Tejon try to fit in there. David Laren, it, it, it's a tough task for Herdman to do, but every time Herdman's been been pushed to make a decision, he seems to make the right one. But we're 45 minutes into the stream, guys. I'll probably go for a little bit longer. There's a lot of comments coming in. So if you guys want to drop a like, drop a sub as well. If you guys are tuning in, it's always appreciated. And feel free to put your comments into the chat. It's been a fun discussion so far on our 25-man roster drop. Cavallini should see minutes on away games. He's experienced in those games. He is a good option to have there. Yeah, and that's, in my, my opinion, like I said, the reason Cavallini is there is because he offers that CONCACAF edge. I don't think he'll start. I said that a, a few times, but I do think we'll see him coming off the bench. K will be fit. He's preparing for season now. Yep. So will the Montreal boys with the uh, with the good old um, oh Concacaf Champions League that they qualified for. A little blessing in disguise both ways. What player do you want to see more of this camp? For me, Ek Ugbo. I would like to see Ek Ugbo. I'll give you. I'll give you a defensive and I'll give you an attacking. I want to see more of Derek Cornelius. I've been praising him a little bit of recent times. I think that he deserves a few shouts. I would like to see Cornelius get a start. So if there's a back three and Victoria needs rest, maybe see Cornelius with Kennedy, for example. Up front, I, I think I would like to see EK. It's him or more of Liam Miller. because I've been a big Liam Miller fan, but I do think Miller is starting to break through. This is an opportunity to see EK start a match beside either... Laren or David and see what our man can do. Hi, JDD TV. Do you think we'll ever get a chance to see Jay Chapman back in the squad? If there's injuries or retirements, it's interesting. It depends how he, he gets on in Scotland. I mean, if he can impress for Dundee, get some good minutes, show that he can be an impact player. I don't see why not, but it, it'll depend. It'll depend. There, there's a lot of young talents and we can pick up some more dual nat, Nats as well. So you never know. I think he I think he is a little ways out though, if I'm being honest. How many games do you think Eusakio plays? I, this is a guess. Again, guys, it doesn't mean anything. My guess is one from the news that we heard. Maybe two if he's able to get back for uh the US game, but I, I'd expect he misses Honduras. Hopefully we'll at least be able to play the El Salvador game. We'll see. What do you think about Justin Smith? Could he start at Nice slash Canada? I mean, he's probably I'm hoping the most targeted center back dual nat that we have playing at Nice. He's been a bench player for them. Real promise with him. I think he's an option given what the French national team has, knowing that he's eligible to represent Canada. I'd hope similar to Jebson that they look at what Canada's developing here, hopefully qualifying for the world cup in 2022 guaranteed 2026. I think players like Jebson and Smith should look at that because it's not going to be easy. I don't think Justin Smith with no disrespect to Justin Smith, because I desperately want him to play for Canada, but I don't think he'll be playing for France anytime soon. So we'll have to see. But uh, I don't. he's not a starter yet for Nice, and he's not. A, I don't think he'd even be a starter for Canada, but he's one for the future in a position we're desperate for. Josh, you're lucky. you guys are lucky the U.S. didn't call Leonard Maloney. Yeah. Do you, you think the CPL will have a team from the territories? Oh, I, I, I don't think that. I don't know. No, probably not. Probably in terms of travel and just, you know, trying to market it. I doubt it. But we'll see. I'd be very interested to see if Jebson is willing to commit this summer for the U20 championship. I don't know, man. I don't know. We'll have to see. The comment on Gutierrez taking free kicks and corners is bang on. His delivery is excellent and tends to result in chances. Yeah, I just didn't. I just didn't really think of Gutierrez as being a set piece specialist coming in because I just didn't think he'd play a lot. I was looking more of the lines of if, if Steph plays, he'll be taking corners, he'll be taking free kicks. Maybe now Vittoria on the odd free kick, depending on the position. Then if we look at Eustachio not being in there, who's likely to be on the pitch for most of the match? I'd probably lean towards Hoylet. Maybe a Zorio. But yeah, I mean, Gutierrez has got a good foot on him, man. I just, again, I don't know how much he'll be on the pitch. So, I mean, if there's a corner free kick late in the match and he gets subbed on, absolutely. Otherwise, for players who I think will be on the pitch the majority of the time, I'm probably looking at Hoylet, Steph, and a Zorio. 
Wait, just 25 men. Why the small roster? Herdman's way, man. Who are we to question? Who are we to question? But yeah, I would have I would have liked to see a little bit more. I think Mexico eventually see 2022 a 24-month ban due to the incidents of yeah, racism and homophobia. Flores chooses Canada. And you, ne- you never know. You never know. Mexico isn't helping themselves out there with the nonsense that they do, but we'll have to wait and see. But Kelly, how you doing, my man? Appreciate, as always, the support you show on the channel. Buddy, Mexico drew us and lost in Canada. <laughs> Caleb's not having it. Um, I do worry that none of our strikers are coming in hot. David Laren coming back from COVID, haven't scored since the return. Cavs off season, but also Ugo has not been playing good recently. Ugo's got a couple of goals, but yes, I, I totally, I totally take your point. Um, I personally think that Laren's our best bet. I, I if as long as he's good to go, I'd put her, I'd put him up front and then partner him with someone. But yeah, it, it's a, it's a fair shout. It's a fair show, but again, when na- some national team players put on the jersey, they, they perform a little differently, and Laren has been an excellent form for us. So he, for me, honestly, for the striker position, I'd, I'd say he's one for me. And then David, then Ugbo, and Cavallini. Guys like Piet, Osorio, and Ugbo start versus El Salvador. Could be. No Davies, no Eustachio, Bills losing in OT. Please make it stop. Go Canada. Any Bills fans in the channel? Uh, Canada won't play Sakio or Davies against the States. I kind of see that. That's why I said, I mean, if Sakio does play, I'm assuming it would just be the El Salvador match. But he he could, if he doesn't play Honduras, I mean, and he's available, he will play the final two. Um, Morales, the Mexican-Canadian, saying that he wants to play for Canada before he makes a decision. I'm assuming you mean Flores. Uh, and yeah, I'm... I think that's positive. If we can put an impact on him and some of the players can get to Flores' head and show him what what uh, what's available, maybe we can maybe we can flip him. But very talented, promising kid playing in the Arsenal Academy. France's backups, backups, backups are clear of Smith, unfortunately. The squad depth is absolutely insane. It is. It opens up a real real option for us. I doubt Jebson leaves England you set up to compete in the U20 championship. Yeah. Yeah, I'd assume if yeah, I, I agree. Um, I think it'd be I think it'd be a stretch to get him to switch over at youth level. It's interesting because we did see Tamori represent Canada at youth level, but also England, and then he represented England. Uh, I think Jebson will probably do his youth football playing in England, and then then probably. And my gut tells me he'll switch over to Canada for for uh, the main squad. Steph is our best set piece taker. I 100 percent agree. The only reason I see Gutierrez in Central America is because he speaks Spanish, which is nice for eavesdropping. Hey, it's part of the game, man. It's part of the game. It's not a bad shout. Not a bad shout. Guys like Hoylet, Gutierrez, Piet, Azorio, Ugbo. Yeah. Uh, Lucas here. He says, what's up, Josh? No international matches for him, for you. No, my man. No, my man. I think it's just, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's there's there's the, uh, the Asian qualification. Obviously, there's African Cup of Nation, but just going on right now. Then there's, then there's the Combo Bowl and Concacaf. So there, I don't think there's any European games. I was pulling for the Bills. Um, fan, fan from a fan. <laughs> we'll trade you Davies for Ariel and Zardes. Uh, no, Greg. No, no, no. Let's go Canada. Let's make history. Great squad, including myself. Isakio signs for FC Porto. It's on their YouTube channel. I love it, Jack. I saw that as well. Pretty pretty cool day, man. Pretty cool day. Canada will get two to four points. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. I'm saying five to seven. Or four to seven. Maybe. Maybe. We'll see. It'll be an interesting game. It'll be interesting to see how Greg plays against you guys. Canada is much closer to friendly ground. <laughs> yeah. For the so legit a cost roll, Dan. Uh, midfield experience isn't necessary. It'll be an interesting one. I'm excited for the. Uh, I'm excited for all three matches. I'm just really nervous for the Honduras game. I would love to start off with three points. We seem to not start super strong, so we'll have to wait and see. What's your opinion on the U.S. game? Should be about negative 15 in Hamilton that day. Positively, a snowstorm, a whiteout. It'll be cold. I've said multiple times. My gut is telling me a tough nil-nil draw, and I would take that. I'm assuming probably the U.S. would take it. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe they'd expect more, but at the same time, 
they got they got two at home. If they can get six points there, a point from us, if we can get six on the road. It'd be incredible. A point from the U.S. I think we both be pretty happy with a seven point window. Where would you rank the Canadian Premier League if it was in Europe after the top five leagues? I don't know if I could give a proper rating. Uh, it wouldn't be a top 10, though. Are you still going to watch the match even though you're on the cruise? I will. I will. Uh, the, the schedule, guys, before we wrap up, just to let you guys know. So we did our stream today. Tomorrow, I believe I'm going to drop the Honduras uh, match preview. Followed by our Canucks abroad, well, Canadian men's national team, Canucks abroad, you know, you know the love that will come out on Wednesday, and then we'll have our watch along and our takeaways on Thursday for the Honduras match. Then me and Filippo are filming a couple U.S. Canada previews that will come out a day or two probably before the U.S. match. Then I, I won't do the watch along on the cruise, uh, but I will do my five takeaways. So probably the next day after the U.S. match and after the El Salvador match, I'll stick up the five takeaways. And then when I come back from the cruise, we'll do a good old big overall roundup of the window. So there's a lot of content coming out, even though I'm going on vacation. Uh, but there's also a chance that I blow me or any, any of my family. I said blow positive like I was taking a, you know, uh, we test positive and we can't go. So we're going to have to wait and see. But I'll definitely keep you guys posted. Uh, what player do you want to see on move next? Either this window or the summer. David. I want to see Jonathan David get his big move next. Steph got his man to Porto. We absolutely love it. Um, and now it's David's turn. Remember that VAR this time will be in favor of Canada. I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair. But yeah, I, I can't put the CPL um, in there. An attached FC rears its head. Are you, look, you, looking at, uh, you looking at Daniel Henry there? You giving a cheeky little look to Daniel Henry? Probably fair. Probably fair. But... He, uh, yeah, I think this will probably be the last comment on the chat today. Got to run, but much respect to this channel, all the people, and hoping for success within the window, the red. So love it, my man. Josh going for a false positive so you can stream the games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, guys, we're going to wrap it up there for today, though. So expect tomorrow our Honduras-Canada match preview coming up. I appreciate everyone tuning in throughout the stream today and help and sticking with me through the, the, the little buffer of Canadian Wi-Fi. But yeah, it should be a good one, guys. If you guys could be so kind on your way out, be sure to drop a like if you haven't done so yet. I'm not sure how many likes we're at. I turned off all the streams. So, you know, if we're at 100, that's, that was the goal. Drop a sub as well, guys, if you guys are new to the channel. And we will see you guys tomorrow for our match preview of Canada versus Honduras. Cheers, friends.